you are welcome once again to the special virtual service in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Let us pray. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are before you and thanking you for taking us through last week, for bringing us together again as a family and into a new week. We are calling you, gracious God, mighty one, to be our guide, to be our provider, to be our protector, to be our light as we travel through another week. And we trust that, Lord, you who are a good shepherd will lead us in the paths of righteousness. Almighty God, who raised your son Jesus Christ as Savior on your right hand and crowned him with everlasting glory, we worship and adore you in the fellowship of your redeemed people. We ascribe to you and to Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord God Almighty, ruler of the ages, who has set your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, upon the glorious throne of your kingdom, we thank you that Jesus has won our flesh and taken our humanness into your presence. This morning we call on you, Lord, to pour down once again your heavenly gifts upon us and be our God and our most merciful intercessor. Blessed are you, O Savior Jesus Christ, that you have not left us desolate, but have given us another counselor, the spirit of truth, to be with us forever. Speak to us this morning. May we know you, give you glory as your people, and we be blessed and be a blessing to our generation. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the scripture reading for today is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 6. To 14. Acts 1, 6 to 14. Let us hear the word of God. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. 
But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved in Christ, peace be with you. I pray once again that the Holy Spirit gives us all understanding of his word and live by his word. The theme for our reflection is that they all may be one. That they all may be one. And the text for reflection is Acts 1 verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The emphasis will be these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. I'll read it in vernacular. As my former tear the can't shame do nang no. Ain't no mina de kuma crook cramp by bomb wara. One in Miano ni Maria, yes, Nina Nina Nianum Gan. Buffo ya sajene ken klen yi chue kuko ni jinyma ke jwe. Mene men fe ke ye le ke ye su nye maria ke enye me hin le ke jwe mo kome hien sole mo mlin wa ame ke jwe mo kome hien sole mo mlin wa eni jina de kumakro kura empaibo mo ara Kumakro. That they all may be one. I am a Presbyterian. And so when I hear these words, that they all may be one, I naturally get excited because this is the motto of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. 
that they all may be one. And that's to be found in John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 21. It reflects our history. Our church was born here as Basel Mission. Then later, Scottish Mission took over during the First World War. And then in 1926, the Scottish Mission handed over the church to us, the people of the Gold Coast, now Ghana. And in 1926, when we had our own logo, we put the words that they all may be one to reflect our unity from Basel to Scotland to Gold Coast to Ghana. We are still one. So today the focus will be on unity of the church or oneness of the church. I must add also that this statement that they all may be one is the prayer of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus praying for his people. So we, the people of Christ, we must pursue oneness or unity. That should be our goal. We must abhor division, partisanship. We are called to be the people of God. Last Thursday was Ascension Day. The reading that we just heard, Acts 1, 6 to 14, it's all about the events of Jesus' ascension into heaven. It was real. Eyewitnesses, the disciples of Jesus, minus Judas Iscariot. Jesus spoke to them. Jesus gave them instructions. To wait for the spirit and also to go into the whole world. Started from Jerusalem to preach the gospel. The good news of the love and forgiveness and salvation of the world. Today, you and I in Ghana, far away from Jerusalem, have heard about Jesus and we are also to carry the message, the good news of the amazing love, forgiveness, salvation of God. But other things happened that day. Whilst Jesus was talking to them, he was lifted up. And as they were gazing, the skies. Two angels told them the way he's going up, he'll come down the same. Jesus will come again. The ascension is marking Jesus' physical exit from this world. His ascension and exhortation to the throne of God. But he will come again. But the emphasis will be on the togetherness of the disciples. Because we'll focus on oneness or unity of the church. One thing comes out clearly. Verse 6 says, Therefore, when they had come together, togetherness, oneness, unity. So,
So before Jesus left them, on the day Jesus left them, they were together. The people of God were together with their Lord. After Jesus had ascended right before their eyes, they returned to Jerusalem. And there they continued, verse 14, continued with one accord, one accord in prayer and supplication. And we were asked to maintain this tradition, oneness, togetherness, one accord, praying together. We must Maintain this tradition. We must be together. The prayer of Jesus and the theme for today that they all may be one. But disunity, division has been a big challenge. I can say, bedeviled the steps of the church for thousands of years, if not millennia. Let us look at a few examples in the Bible that cause disunity or division amongst the church. Number one, Discrimination, ethnicity, racialism, social status. These cause division. People feel discriminated against. They don't belong because of their tribe. Because of their race. Because of their social status. They feel marginalized. Neglected. Left out. And the story in Acts chapter 6. The first four verses. We hear of an uproar. Or memory. Dissatisfaction. Between two groups of people. The Hebrews and the Hellenists. Hellenists are from Greece, Greek, Grecian Jews. There was discrimination. In the daily distribution of food, food, people were discriminated against. I hope in these days of COVID-19, when food is being shared, People will not feel discriminated against. At least not in the church. Discrimination. It has disturbed the church. Two. Personality cult. And we get an example in 1 Corinthians 1 verses 10 to 13. Where in the church of Corinth. Some could boast. I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. And Paul asked them a big question. Is Christ divided? And I pose this question again to you and to me in the church. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? To date, we are still having it. We see it in our country, Ghana. Members Adoring, over glorifying their ministers. Personality cult. Virtually worshipping them. You know it, so I'll not mention names. And this divides the church. Are you bowing before your minister, your bishop, your prophet? Or bowing before the Lord. 
personality God. And I'm talking to my colleague, leaders of the church. Glory belongs to God. Our prayer says, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he must increase. Beloved, let us be humble. No matter the charismatic gift you have, remember it is a gift for you to build the church, not to build yourself. I think I've said enough. Don't worship your pastor. Worship the Lord Jesus. He only died for you. So I've mentioned discrimination. It divides the church. Personality cult. Hero worship. And for Paul. And for Apollos. Division in the church. And then. Doctrine or teachings of the church. Yes. We have so many denominations. With different practices. Based on our interpretation of the word of God. And this sort of division led to the first council meeting of the church, Jerusalem Council, recorded in Acts chapter 15, the first two verses. It was a doctrinal issue. The, the disciples and elders of the church had to meet to answer a question, a theological question. Should Gentiles converted to Christianity, should they first be circumcised like Jews before being accepted as saved people or not? Doctrine. And we are still arguing about doctrine. Is that the central issue? The central issue is Christ died for the world to forgive us. And if we repent and accept him as Lord, we are led by the Spirit to become children of God. That is the issue. Having everlasting life and entering heaven. Not our philosophies, not our teachings that we have idolized so much that we look down on others who don't interpret the Bible the way we do. Litigation in the church, dragging each other to court over issues that we could have resolved if we were Forgiving enough, humble enough. First Corinthians 6 talks about it. Paul rebukes the Christians for dragging each other to God. These and other things I have not mentioned divide the church. But one statement by a former head of state in Ghana that I like repeating. I'll mention the name. But those who know, know that statement. You are either part of the problem or part of the solution. There's no middle way. So I am challenging you this morning. Are you part of the problem of disunity and division of your church? And let me add, your family. Or part of the solution of bringing unity where you are. Your church, your home. May I add, your country. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution. There is no middle way. Now the word itself. Unity. 
There's a popular saying, it's commonplace anyway. Unity is strength. But unity, the other simple word for unity is oneness. Oneness, one. And Merriam Webster, my favorite dictionary, defines unity as a condition of harmony. I like that word, harmony. Harmony is another big word that needs to be explained to explain unity. Harmony also means a pleasing, I like that word, pleasing arrangement of parts. Pleasing. So, where there's harmony, there's joy. It's nice. The place is nice. Because there's harmony. A pleasing arrangement of parts. Parts. So, it means that there is diversity in unity. And unity in diversity. That's philosophical, but we will explain it. May I add this also, that unity does not necessarily mean uniformity. There are two different things. We cannot all be the same. But we can have unity. Diversity in unity and unity in in diversity. And I come again. It is a condition of harmony. If you want to understand unity, look at your body. Many parts. But one body. You chop off one part, you are incomplete. Many parts. Arrangement. A pleasing arrangement. You see the connection. Your head, your hands, your legs, your eyes, nose. These are what we see. But what about those inside? They are also part of it. And there's an interconnection. And when they work together, you are strong. And you are happy. Pleasing arrangement. Are you not fearfully and wonderfully made? That's the beauty of Unity. And also, we are talking about a condition of harmony. Unity. Look at music. Many parts. Trouble. Alto. Tenor. Bass. And see how musicians, choirs, singing bands, singing grooves, choral grooves, you name them. See how they sing the same song with different parts. So now you see how harmony is so beautiful. Harmony makes us understand the beauty of unity. It is beautiful. So back to you. Do you make things beautiful where you are? When you are giving different things to manage or different people to lead, do you harmonize the different parts in a pleasing way? That's all I'm saying. Seek unity wherever you are. Beautiful combination. Making different things work together for a common goal. That's unity. Making different things, different people work together as a unit for a common goal. That is what the Lord Jesus prayed for when he said that they all may be one. i like to also mention Psalm 133. Let me read the part that I love about it. 
Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 133. It is like precious oil upon a head. It cools, it's, it cools you down. Oil. Running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. It's soothing oil. It's healing. But I like the words. How good and how pleasant. Have you noticed that some things are pleasant? They are nice. They are enjoyable. But they are dangerous. It could be food. You may like a particular food, like I did some time ago. I enjoyed it. It's pleasant. But I can't eat it again. Because for now, the doctors have told me it is not good. It could be a drink. It's nice. But it's dangerous. It could be sex. Young ones, old ones, everybody is involved. But it has its limits. It's pleasant. But it could be dangerous. STIs, unwanted pregnancies, abortions, street children, all because of casual sex. Which was pleasant, of course. Sex could be also made ugly by rape. We hear it every day. Even fathers raping their daughters. And even having kids. So you see, some things are pleasant. But they could be dangerous. Then he said, Good and pleasant. Some things are also good, but not pleasant. Like what? Hard work. Hard work. And as I wonder why God makes us work so hard before we get things to enjoy. Hard work. You have to work hard. Lazy people find life tough. It takes hard-working people, industrious people to enjoy life. You see, you see, there's this song that says, nothing good comes easy. It, it's one of the mysteries of life I'm trying to understand. Nothing good comes easy. Look at how Jesus suffered on the cross to save you, to forgive you. It was good, but not pleasant. Beaten, humiliated, killed innocently. Injustice. But something good came out of it. So some things are good, but not pleasant. Hard work, I've mentioned. Some people have to sacrifice. Jesus did that. And many are sacrificing for the good of our country. May God bless those in the front line of trying to control COVID-19. May God bless them. It is good. But it's not pleasant. Like medicine. Like surgery. You may need it. Many, many people have survived this life because of medicine. Because of surgery. So you see, some things are pleasant and not good. Some things are good and not pleasant. But we are being told, unity is good and pleasant. So you see how unique unity is. Good and pleasant. Pursue it wherever you are. And you see the beauty of unity. It brings peace. It brings progress. It brings prosperity. 
let us, wherever we are, seek to bring unity. Let us try to break barriers. People have erected walls and make sure that nobody scales that wall. Break the wall. Like the Berlin Wall was destroyed. Berlin Wall of Germany. Dividing former East and West Germany. Today we have one Germany. Because the wall was broken. Break the wall. Break the wall. Jesus came to break the wall. In Christ, there is no slave. No Gentile. No male nor female. All are one in Christ. This is the agenda of the Lord. And this must be the agenda of the church. Let me gradually get to some key details about things that unite us as Christians. I'm not talking of only Presbyterians. I'm talking to Christians universally. And the Bible makes it clear. Things that bind us as people of God. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading from verses 4 to 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. One Father. We have one Father. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. If you agree he's your Father and I also agree he's my Father, then we are siblings in Christ. So what's the fight about? And the same inheritance. Eternal life. So you don't lose anything by just being child of God. Which things bring us together? I said, we are one body. We are the body of Christ. One body. Just like the body, as I indicated earlier, has many parts. So is the church. Many parts, one body. We have different gifts. But they are all to help the body. So what do you have? Don't separate yourself. And make yourself an island. No man is an island. No church should be an island. We are one body. No matter the names we have given to ourselves. One body. The body of Christ. And then one spirit. And in, in my Bible, the spirit is capital S. The capital S simply means the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. It is one Spirit that influences us. For as many as are led by the Spirit are children of God. So, what makes us children of God is this one Spirit, God himself. Spirit with a capital S. Just as you were called in one hope. The hope of the resurrection of the dead. And eternal glory. That is our hope. Do you believe it? That when your dearest, your nearest dies or has died already, will rise again? We say that in Apostles' Creed when we meet every Sunday. That's our hope. Do you believe that there's heaven? Do you believe of a, 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 a glorious future? Do you believe it? That Jesus says he's going to make a place, prepare a place for us? 
That he'll come and take us there. That is our hope. Or you think it is fiction. It is not. Everything that Jesus did and said is real. And it will happen if it doesn't happen in your life. We have hope. We are people of hope. So we don't give up in this life. Because we have hope. We have one body. The body of Christ. The Christ as the head. One spirit. Holy spirit. One hope. Resurrection of the dead and eternal glory for all those who are in Christ. We have hope. We have one faith. Faith in the death, resurrection, ascension, and second coming of Jesus. Faith in the judgment. We have one faith. These things bind us as people of God. One Lord. Who is our Lord? Jesus Christ. One baptism. Why one baptism? We are baptized in the name of God. Period. We fight over sprinkling, immersion, submersion, total immersion. We are still arguing about that. Acts 19, some people were baptized according to John's formula of baptism. They say baptism took the deep in water, so it must be deep in water. But Acts 19, you know, some people had that baptism, but they didn't have the spirit. So the issue is not how much water is poured on you or how deep we are put in the water, but being baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By this, we become part of the kingdom of God and the church. So you see, we have many things that bind us together. We are one body, one spirit, one hope, one faith, one Lord, one Father. Why don't we emphasize these things that keep us together and are interested in things that divide us? May I suggest to you that if you emphasize in the minor things, reconsider it and emphasize major things. We have one Father. One spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Emphasize that. Let, let us not idolize rituals. I'm not saying they don't matter. They, they are only symbols. They point us to the truth. But the power is in the spirit. Not in the water. Not in the oil. But in the one in whose name... Let us emphasize that. The Savior, Jesus. That they all may be one. As I end the sermon, I entreat you to take a hard look at yourself and the role you are playing in your church. Are you a unifier? Or destroyer? Of the unity of the church. The comments we make. To expose people to ridicule. And disdain. And humiliation. Because they are not like us. Think about it. Jesus came for everybody. No discrimination. He met the Samaritan woman. Jews don't mix with them. Jesus talked to her. And she was surprised. Break the barriers wherever you are. May the Lord give us understanding to pursue unity. A condition of harmony. Let's learn to harmonize different things and different people. Let us synergize to get the best out of different things put together. Lord, hear our prayer and bless your word in our hearts. Amen. 
who have intercessory prayer. We'll pray for unity in the church, the family, for Ghana. And tomorrow is AU Day, Africa Union Day, 25th May. We'll pray for the unity of Africa. You know, there's been a fight since we had independence. Remember the famous statement of our first president, Sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah? The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it's connected to the independence of Africa. He fought for it. But what he was dreaming about, we have not attained it. We are still divided. Francophone, Anglophone, Portuguese, different currencies. We need to work at unity. Let us pray for Christian unity. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace to lay to heart the great danger we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice and whatsoever else may hinder us from true union and concord, that as there is one body and one spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may henceforth be all of one heart and of one soul, and united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and love, and may with one mind and one tongue glorify you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Let's pray for family unity or reunion where there's division. Lord, your word tells us that you saw that it is not good for the man to live alone. So you put us together in families, in society. But many things tear us apart right from the home. Lord, we are bringing before you broken homes. Homes where marriage is loveless. Couples are living just because of legality. But emotionally separated, physically separated, mentally separated, and affecting children. We are bringing broken homes. Homes of misery because Parents don't see eye to eye. They are no more respecting and cherishing each other, forgetting the vows they made on their wedding day. We are bringing innocent children suffering in broken homes. Lord, you are the healer. When we are hurt, you comfort us. You have the power of forgiveness. And you've taught us the beauty of forgiveness. Lord, where there's unforgiveness, where there's pain, where there's bitterness, where there's anger, in homes. And I'm talking also, Lord, before you about extended families. Because of property. Because of cheating and lying. Because of falsification of documents, wills. Or people feel marginalized. 
in their own family, by their own kith and kin. Lord, the pain. Some have changed their names because of broken homes and broken families. Lord, you know them all. You came to break barriers. Help us. Help us, Lord, in this pain. And for us who counsel, continue to give us, Lord, the grace to speak to those who are hurting in broken homes, broken families. We bring Ghana before you. Unity. Lord, you know how sharply divided we are, especially politically and tribally. Lord, and yet your church is in Ghana. Bless your church to continue to pursue unity. We bring in Africa again before you. Thanking you, Lord, for the avalanche of resources you've blessed Africa with. Anything we need physically, we have in Africa. Anything. Resourceful people, rivers, minerals, vegetation, Everything, everything, amazing. And yet, we are not united. We have been struggling to be one continent. We are still separate, small states in Africa. Lord, as we celebrate AU Day, Africa Union Day, We pray that, Lord, this African Union organization will be deepened and more forceful in breaking down barriers. And now before I end, I commit you into the Lord's hands. Some of us are having problems with our own selves. What we want to do we can too. And like Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Lord, I help her. For anyone listening to me who is struggling with his hopes, giving up, I bring before you. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your heart and your mind in the knowledge and love of Jesus. And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. Once again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Amen.